What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So despite releasing a month after the Switch came out, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe continues to roll along with the new DLC that we've been seeing releasing in waves. And now it looks like through a data mine and leak, we may have an idea as to the different courses that are coming up in the next couple of waves. We'll go over that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about some concerns that have popped up around Sony after a recent survey appears to put PlayStation and NFT in the same sentence. And we're also gonna be talking about a massive announcement for an arcade cabinet that has people wondering, could this franchise be making a return to consoles? Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with Splatoon 3, which feels like it's kind of sneaking up on us. It's out in a month and we just saw the ESRB actually put a rating on it. We can see that here. This coming in E10+, plus, pretty much expected there, is a third person shooter set in a fantasy land in which players assume the role of a squid-like creature investigating whimsical environments. And I've seen some people kind of concerned about this game, I, I guess, because Nintendo isn't saying a lot about it right now. I think what we'll see from them is like a full direct that's just dedicated to Splatoon 3, probably the next couple of weeks leading up to release. Remember, it's out in what, the for like a week and a half into September. So I think in like the back half of August, they'll just do what they did kind of with Xenoblade Chronicles 3, where they spent like 20 minutes going over everything. And I'm kind of thinking the way they're gonna separate it from the second Splatoon, which yeah, looks very similar for most casual players, is they'll have some sort of single player mode that is more meaningful, probably kind of similar to, I guess, what they had with some of the expansion for the second game, but that's what I'm thinking. We should probably see Nintendo start to talk a bit more about Splatoon 3 now that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is out there. Also, we just talked about the play tests that were going on for Beyond Good and Evil 2, and now it looks like Ubisoft's made a new hire for the game, which we can see here. This is over on PlayStation Life, who says Blizzard's former narrative designer, Sarah Eliano, has joined Ubisoft for, get this, a new lead writer. This has led PlayStation Lifestyle to speculate that the game's development is probably nowhere near finished, which, yeah, I, I would say so if they have uh, lead writers still coming in and, and I guess working out the narrative for this game. I, this is such a weird situation with this, th just the development around Beyond Good and Evil 2. I, I mean, I talked about the whole thing where they were collaborating with just creators apparently on like the music for the game and artwork and stuff. and. This game's been in development for a long time. I think it was like 2008 or 2009 or something. So I, they moved development to like PS5 and Xbox series. And I mean, do we think it's coming out this generation? I, I hope so. I hope it's able to make its release window in the next four to five years, but I guess we'll see. Oh, and we did have some pretty big news come out of Evo over the weekend for Dragon Ball Fighters fans. This was posted up over on Twitter from Bandai Namco Esports. It's a message to the Dragon Ball Fighters community where they talk about rollback netcode being applied to the game through an update. They didn't give a specific date for that happening, just later on this year we should see it. And it's gonna be coming alongside of a native version for the PS5, the Xbox series. And they also mentioned that there would be an like an like a upgrade path, which we've seen this vary from free all the way up to the Atlas method of buy it again. So I'm hoping this is just a free update and they'll probably just put PS5 and Xbox series box arts and stuff on store shelves. Um, interestingly enough, there is no mention of a Switch update for rollback netcode, which kind of lines up with what we saw with the, the Atlas uh, Persona fighting game that didn't have rollback netcode on the Switch, but it did have it on other consoles. That's a little strange there. Anyway, they also mentioned this is the final like meaningful update for Dragon Ball Fighters, which kind of implies that they're moving on to the next thing. And I'm wondering if we're gonna see just another game kind of in the Dragon Ball Fighters line or if they'll try something new, but Dragon Ball Fighters, extremely popular from a sales perspective as well as the competitive scene. So it'd be a little weird if they moved on completely from Dragon Ball because they really seem to figure it out here with this one. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get to the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with how Nintendo seemingly just leaked out the uh, information that'd be required to put together a, a general list as to which 
courses would be part of the next wave for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The booster course pass has been rolling along. Most recently, the, the wave that was released had a bit of a surprise in there with a brand new course that is also going to be going to tour, but they decided to put it in the, the booster course pass first. Pretty cool to see that. Well, we can see this post up by Oatmeal Dome, who says, Nintendo accidentally left many music preview files in the version 2.1.0 update allowing us to identify multiple unreleased courses. What's really funny about this is if uh, if you look on YouTube where they uploaded all the files, they're like one or two seconds long, but that's all you need for fans of this series as they've been able to match this up with different courses. And um, we can see Oatmeal Dome go on further to say it may take some time to load a full music file from the ROM. A separate prefetch file is created of the first one second, which can be loaded into memory in advance. This prefetch is played while the full file is being loaded. Unfortunately for Nintendo, while they deleted the full songs of unreleased courses from the ROM, they accidentally left some of the prefetch files. It's possible to identify several courses just based on the first one second of their music. That's right, don't underestimate the Mario Kart community. They will figure it out. And in fact, if you look here, Fish Guy has kind of filled in some of the gaps based on a lot of the work. People are putting different things together through speculation and just kind of matching up music. And I mean, we can see they appear to have just filled out the entirety of the next wave. We have Berlin, Byways, Peach Garden, Waluigi Stadium, which good to see uh, Double Dash in there. Uh, then we have Boo Lake or Broken Pier, Mary Mountain, Alpine Pass, Rainbow Road, and they've also worked to fill in some of the other waves as well. Now I'll leave this link down below in the sources if you want to kind of go through the image there or even take a look at some of the files for yourself just to double check their work. But I mean Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is just a sales juggernaut for Nintendo. so. The excitement around the Booster Course Pass has only been good for them with the with this game. I mean, if you look at their sales information that they posted, they had like highlights for sales of the different games where it's like here's here's a uh, Switch Sports, here's Mario uh, Mario uh, Soccer and then here's Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with one and a half million units that sold, right? Like in, in that fiscal quarter, just randomly. And that's just the power of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It continues to roll along. If you take the Wii U numbers and the Switch numbers for it, it's easily over 50 million units sold, which I guess is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time, because if you think about it, if Mario Kart 8 Deluxe didn't continue to sell at the rate that it is, we probably would have some brand new Mario Kart already on the Switch. But you know what? The booster course pass with kind of the list of, of, uh, of these courses from different games that we're seeing here, I mean, it is a lot of value being thrown together all into one game. I know the textures and stuff, there's been a lot of criticism around that, but it's, I mean, it's pretty cool to look at how many courses will inevitably be available in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. You can just fire up and play through something from the DS, then jump to the GameCube and then to the Game Boy Advance. So, uh, hey, take a look at some of the courses if you're curious here. And then when the Wave 3 inevitably releases, we believe at the end of this year, as they still have a roadmap set up throughout 2023, we can check their work to see if they got everything right. Next up, let's talk about a massive announcement for an arcade cabinet that was revealed by Arcade 1UP, which I've kind of fallen off of the Arcade 1UP bandwagon a bit here. I, I kind of think that they've lost their way a bit with what they originally started as, which was a very affordable or more affordable way to get an arcade cabinet into your house or apartment or whatever. They even kind of size correctly for maybe a smaller space. But since then, their prices have continued to climb up and up and up and the arcade cabinets have just gotten larger. And for the point now where you see cabinets like $700, $800 or something, but it's impossible to ignore this most recent announcement. You can see it here and they have a lot of images showing this off and that's right. Marvel versus Capcom 2. Uh, first of all, the cabinet looks great. Like that that's the thing. I know the pricing has continued to go up on these things. At least this one here looks like it's it's worth some money. They even has like a light up marquee at the top. You can even the custom riser is there with the Marvel vs. Capcom logo at the bottom. Love the artwork on the side panels for the, the arcade cabinet itself. And this is one that's going to be highly sought after. They say pre-orders will start September 8th. So you, you want to keep an eye on this one with, they'll have free shipping to the U S as well. They have a couple of things that they go over here, which includes Wi-Fi enabled. You will be able to play online with it, which that is 
one of the better features they've introduced with their arcade cabinets is the ability to play online with other people just have the arcade cabinets kind of sync up through the internet and play and it's not just going to have Marvel vs. Capcom 2 in the cabinet. It will have eight titles total. They have the list here with uh, MVC2, then Marvel vs. Capcom, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes, X-Men Children of the Atom, X-Men Mutant Apocalypse, and Marvel Super Heroes in War of the Gems. And I'll admit, even though I've kind of fallen out of the whole arcade one-up thing, I really want this cabinet. I mean, it's Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which is going through a, a whole history on its own of being delisted and ripped off of consoles and you can't buy it on the current systems, but it's an arcade classic that's worth making sure you break out the Dreamcast and get the CRT out to play it. So I, I, I'm looking at this now. I'm expecting it to be quite a bit of money because the, the licensing, all the stuff that goes into this, uh, it's it's going to be interesting when they drop that price tag. And there's probably a reason that the price tag isn't up on their website as it is now. But again, coming back to Marvel vs. Capcom 2, this getting announced really got people excited because of the idea of it maybe making a return to current systems. There's the whole campaign of free MVC2 going on to the point where there's just a website you can go to and kind of take part in it with a hashtag and all this. So the fan base really wants this to happen. The fact that we see some sort of movement here with Arcade 1UP, which they've had some of the Marvel vs. Capcom or Marvel games kind of in their cabinets before, but this is like the next level for it. So we'll see if there is any kind of movement on the console side, because while it'd be great to get the $800 cabinet. Be a lot nicer to be able to buy it for like 15 or 20 bucks on the PlayStation Store or the eShop or something and then just kind of move along. Next up, let's talk about some of the concerns that have been brought up around PlayStation and NFTs. And a lot of this has to do with Evo, which we know Sony had acquired Evo last year and it just ran throughout this weekend, which was pretty exciting, obviously for fighting game fans or anyone who's a fan of watching esports and all of this, right? But there was a survey that was going around there and we can see it. It was shared online where it asked, what do you collect most? Which of the following NFT or digital collectibles would you most be interested in purchasing? Now, digital collectibles is the phrase that's kind of interchangeable with NFTs. And this is what I've said before. If any of these larger companies want to adopt basically NFTs, they would change the name to something else. And it kind of seems like digital collectibles might be uh, one that softens the blow of, of uh, kind of getting involved with NFTs. But it says uh, Evo branded, okay. Favorite music artists, favorite esports players or teams. PlayStation items, favorite game, wait a minute, PlayStation items. This is the thing that really seemed to concern people. This was kind of a survey question that they had set up to be part of like a, like like an app as like the experience there. You go through it, you, you get some reward and stuff for filling it out. But the fact that you see PlayStation items in there, we know about PlayStation Stars, which has digital collectibles as part of it. Now, Sony was very quick to come out and say, no, no, our digital collectibles for PlayStation Stars is not NFT related. They, that very fast because people saw it and they were like, wait a minute, this, this sounds like NFTs, but they're not being as straightforward as GameStop, who was running an entire marketplace, which if you followed <laughs> their, 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 their involvement with this, hasn't been great. It's been bad headline after bad headline after bad headline. Let me show you the most recent one. Take a look, this was posted up over on Eurogamer. GameStop NFT creator is suspended for selling NFTs of indie games they didn't own. This was on August 6th, by the way, two days ago. They said this person didn't contact me to ask me anything. He just took my game and sold it. This was on GameStop's marketplace. And that's the biggest issue right now is just NFTs while the underlying technology is just making something in the digital space unique. It's, it's being used for all kinds of wild and, and crazy and out there stuff that comes back to basically being scams for the most part, right? It's the wild west currently in the early days of this all digital metaverse internet thing that people are attempting to build here. And just the reputation around a non-fungible token is just completely destroyed before it's even really gotten moving for something that's actually useful. So to see PlayStation and NFT kind of in the same area with that uh, survey that's from Evo, which in turn is owned by Sony, 
I understand why people would be concerned by that, but we've seen surveys get passed around all the time for different things from gaming companies and nothing ever comes from it. They might just be gauging interest. How many people are going to check PlayStation items for NFTs or digital collectibles, which hey, I guess if a lot of people attend Evo and check that box, then maybe Sony will take another look at it. But I just, I still don't think Sony is looking at NFTs as they stand now as something they want to attach their name to currently. Again, after they had to come out and quickly put out the fire around digital collectibles with PlayStation stars, I don't really think they're interested in running headfirst in the NFTs right now. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 it's coming out at the end of October. And there are still many things I'm sure that they are looking to show off when it comes to the multiplayer side. And they also want to talk about some of the early access stuff that will be going on when it comes to a closed beta and then an open beta. And it looks like they'll be running an event next month to go over a lot of this. We can see this. This was posted up over on CallOfDuty.com. It's Call of Duty Next. Next, it's happening September 15th. It, they say this will talk about Call of Duty and what the imminent future looks like. Obviously, that would include details around Modern Warfare 2, as well as Call of Duty Warzone, which we hear that there is a new Call of Duty Warzone, a follow-up Warzone 2 that apparently is coming out at the end of this year, at least in the next 12 months or so. We'll, we'll see there. And then also them talking about the mobile version of uh, Call of Duty Warzone. They're going to do a full Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer reveal, which let's face it, that's why like 90% of people play Call of Duty now is for the multiplayer. And they also have a list of some of the different dates for getting early access to the game if you want to take part in the beta. We have the first weekend, which is PlayStation exclusive. We know Sony has the marketing deal with them for the next uh, couple of years. So this is what we basically expect where PlayStation will get first dibs September 16th to the 17th. And then there'll be an open beta September 18th to the 20th. Weekend two will be a cross-play beta and that will include Xbox, PC, and PlayStation. And then we'll have all platforms. This will take place September 26th second to the 23rd and then September 24th to the 26th. Now keep in mind the betas are essentially a way to get you to pre-order the game ahead of time as they mention here that beta codes will be tied to your Activision account and will be needed to participate in these different betas. And after what we saw with Call of Duty Vanguard, which seemed to disappoint a lot of people, I think there's a, a lot of pent up excitement for Modern Warfare 2. I mean, one, it's Infinity Ward. Two, it's Modern Warfare. So I feel like the betas, whether they're closed or open, will probably get crushed. I'm sure there'll be some network issues thrown in there, but just keep these dates in mind. I'm sure they'll talk more about it during the Call of Duty next event on September 15th. So keep an eye out for that. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're taking a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday. We're asked, have you purchased an arcade one-up cabinet? 7% said, yes, I own at least one cabinet. 31% said, no, but I'm interested if they announce a certain game. And then 62% said, no, I'm not interested in arcade cabinets. So the game that I had in mind that was like, I'll come back, I'll pick it up and check it out would be Time Crisis. Like with the actual gun cons and all this, I maybe even the pedal, I know that, that could be kind of cool. But Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I was not expecting that at all. So let me know if that is a game that made you double take and go, oh, maybe I should get one of these arcade cabinets from 1UP. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Gaz says, I believe Nintendo would be better off treating the Switch like the DS and keep on revising it for the next couple of years at least. When you're on a roll, keep going. A new system will be needed in time, whatever the form. I hope they double down on the hybrid console concept works for me. I think we all hope they double down on the hybrid console concept. I would prefer the move that they did with the DS to the 3DS, where they still kept the idea of the DS, the dual screen display. They had like 3D attached to it that could be turned off anyway. And they they worked up the account system and stuff because remember they brought in the kind of the eShop stuff with the DSi, but then they really worked to refine it um, with the 3DS. That's sort of what I'd like them to do with the next Switch, whatever that is, whether it's a re revision or just like a clean break to the next generation. Don't overthink it, Nintendo. You got it figured out here with this hybrid concept. Just work on refining it further. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Have you been enjoying the couple of waves that have released from the Booster Course Pass? And did you get a chance to go through the one 
second audio clips of music to double check their work. And then also, what about Arcade 1UP? Were you surprised about Marvel vs. Capcom 2's arcade cabinet? And are you picking it up? Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.